17. Six days may work be done, but the seventh, notice he keeps on iterating, seven, 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 is the Sabbath of rest. You worship the Father every day, and you should. But this day is the only day that is holy, sanctified, meaning set apart, and this is the day that y'all rested on. You are his creation. You are his chosen people. You better rest, just like your father did. Six days may work be done, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy unto y'all, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. That means for an ever covenant. So when a Christian tells you they're not under this law, you need to say, Amen. You have told the truth. You are not under this law because this law is not for you. It's for an Israelite. Is that simple enough, saints? Christians are not under this law. They are lawless people. They, they follow their demagogues and gods. And they try to use our book to do it. <laughs> but they're, they're telling you the truth when they're telling you they're not under this law. So stop fighting with them. Verse 16, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout this generation for a perpetual covenant. Verse 17 again. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Can y'all Israelites say glory? For in six days, Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, Written with the finger of Yah. Is that clear thus far? Is that clear thus far? All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the prophets. All right. We're going to go over here to the prophets real quick. We're going to go down the book a little bit, okay? All right. Um, let's go over here to... Let's go to the book of... Da -da 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 Man, we can go so many places. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. How about that we go there first, all right? Go to the book of Isaiah, all right? All right. And let's go to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, all right? Let me know when y'all get there now, okay? Isaiah 56. Let me know when you get there. All right. We're going to start at verse 2. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that lay a hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Verse 5. Even unto them will I give in my house, within my walls, a place and a name better than the sons and daughters, and I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves unto Yahweh. Anybody from any nation that wants to join themselves unto the king of glory, and they do that by joining themselves to us Israelites, his people, guess what it says right here? It's got something for you. Look at this. To love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath. From polluting it and take a hold of, notice he said this, my covenant. He's owning this thing for himself. Y'all get this. Even I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offers and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer. For all people. Who's those all people? The ones that join themselves to Yahweh to keep his covenant, to keep his Sabbath day. Can y'all say amen? 
Hallelujah. Can y'all say amen? Glory to the king. I mean, I can go on. I, there's so many scriptures I can do. Let's go over here to, let's go to another one in Isaiah over here. For a let's go to Isaiah um, 66. Isaiah 66. All right, Isaiah 66. Remember, this covenant is not to Christians. It's to Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, to the house of Judah and the house of Israel. Isaiah 66, starting at verse 22. Isaiah 66, verse 22. Go ahead and get there. Hurry up and get there. All right, because we need to move on. Yeah, I need to speed up here just a little bit, okay? For as the new heavens, notice, this is not talking about these heavens we're familiar with right now. Neither is it talking about this earth that was filled. It says new heavens. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith Yahweh, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath, to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. Notice, made a distinction with the moons and the Sabbath. I'm going to do a teaching on the moon and Sabbath before long to get a lot of people online. Take Pastor Dollar's advice. If the Most High is giving you ears to hear me, don't let no spirit, because spirits will challenge your mind. If you got a witness in your heart, don't let no spirit take you away. And don't let you, yourself take you away. If he's giving you ears to hear me, then you hear me. If he's giving you ears to hear somebody else, hear somebody else and forget about me. Is that all right? I, can't, I don't know how to be any more honest than that. All right? So even in the new kingdom, even in the new kingdom, we're going to be coming before the king of glory. Even in that, and we're going to be worshiping him on the Sabbath. All right? Now, let's go to the book of Nehemiah. Let's go back, go back a few books. Go back past Isaiah. Go back past Proverbs and Psalms and Job. And once you get past Esther, you should come up to Nehemiah. All right? Let's go to Nehemiah, all right? Nehemiah. All right? Nehemiah chapter 13. All right? We're going to show you something. You want to know what Pastor Doc get all this fire from? Huh? I, I mean, it's in my blood. It's in my bloodline. Hallelujah. It's in my bloodline. There's fire. Nehemiah is going to reform them folks. And um, we'll start at verse 15 the same time, okay? Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 15. During this Shabbat, you should read this whole account right here in Nehemiah chapter 13 so you can get an understanding. In those days, I saw Judah, some trading wine presses on the Sabbath. Notice, Judah's was, they was actually trading wine presses, making wine on the Sabbath. Look at this, look at this. And bringing in sheaves and laden asses and also wine, grapes, and figs and all manner of burdens which they bought unto Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. Notice Judah was doing this. You see the reason why we're in the shape we're in? Because our people ain't got no sense. They ain't got no little sense. You're going to find out what happened, right? Let's, let's read off. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold vegetables. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which bought fish and all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Our people are screwed up, messed up. They know they ain't supposed to be doing this. You see how far we've fallen? You see how when our mind gets away from the covenant of the Most High God, you see what happens? Look what it says right here. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah. In other words, Nehemiah, he didn't go to the lay people. He went straight to the preachers. I'm using modern day terms. He went straight to those boot licking, sissified, yellow street spineless cockroaches of those preachers who's supposed to make sure, those priests, who make sure that the people keep the commandments of the Most High God. He went straight to the authority of the day and he spoke to power. Then I continued with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, what evil thing is this ye do? And profane the Sabbath day. No, he said about profaning on Sunday. 
He wouldn't have cared one bit if they did this on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Roman days. Hebrew days, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh day. Huh? Not seven day, one through six. He wouldn't have said nothing about it. Look what he says right here. And it came to pass. Uh, did your fathers, no, verse 18, did not your fathers dust and did not our Yah bring all this evil upon us and upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. Let me tell you folks something. You keep following these boot-licking, lying Christians. The rest of these jack leg dog people out here, no wonder your, house, your, your mind is all screwed up. No wonder your house is in the shambles. No wonder, you, no wonder you can't make ends meet. No wonder you're out of your mind and stuff today. Because you're letting these people jack you right out of your heritage. You let these people jack you. First of all, they're taking away the protection of the Most High because the angel Yah is encamped around about them that fear him. And according to Ecclesiastes 12, 13, the ones that fear him is the ones who keep his commandments. For let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yah, keep his commandments. It's the whole duty of man. And you lost your fear of the Most High Yah when you don't keep his commandments no more. And so therefore he removes his protection from you and now your enemies who you serve, now they're going to rule over you. That's our problem in this wicked society today. Huh. So look, look, verse 18 again. Did not our fathers Thus, and did not our Yah bring all this evil upon us in this city? Did you bring in more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath day? The Sabbath, I mean. Verse 19. And it came to pass, and when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, notice, before the Sabbath came in, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of the servants, I said at the gates that there should no burden be bought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and the sellers and all kind of world lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. These hard-headed, ain't that just like us, they stubborn, hard-headed people. They didn't believe what Nehemiah said. So you know what they did? They pulled their little caravans up. They pulled their little merchant ships up and they lodged outside the gates of Jerusalem because Nehemiah took charge of the situation. He shut the gates, made sure ain't nobody coming in there on the Sabbath. To do any buying, no selling, no wine press treading. You can forget all no burdens of coming in to Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. He made sure. But these dogs sit outside the gate. Just sit out there on the Sabbath day. Let's see what Nehemiah did. Hmm? Verse 21. Then I testified against them and said unto them, why lodge ye about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay my hands on you. And he ain't talking about getting no oil and anointing them and praying for them. He's talking about giving them some of these right here. Giving them some of these right here, right up beside their eyes and their nose and lips and head. That's what Nehemiah talking about. Nehemiah talking about laying some hands on them, grabbing them and jacking them up. That's what Nehemiah is talking about. And I testify against them and said to them, why lodge you about the wall? If you do so again, I will lay hands on you. And from that time forth, they no more, they came, from that time came, they no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should be cleansed, that they should cleanse themselves. Levi, you know, you know what Nehemiah said? Because he knew he wasn't in the priesthood. He said, now you damn boot licking jack leg dogs and you damn priests, you get your sorry rings over there and you sanctify yourself and cleanse yourself. Yourself. And you repent of this wickedness that you have bought on Israel because you want you want to do like everybody else is doing. Why are men up today in Israel? And I command the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, oh yeah. This is what Neil I said. Remember me, oh yeah. You know how I say that a lot. I'm in my prayer card. I'm saying, y'all remember me, Father. Remember me that I kept your commandments, that I spoke the truth to your people. Remember me. Remember me, Father. Concerning this also, and spare me according to thy greatness and thy mercy. You better believe the Most High is going to spare me. Many of you people in trouble. Out there, you keep on transgressing this Sabbath. You are some serious trouble. 
I can go through all the prophets and talk about the Sabbath. Let's go over here because a lot of people will accuse us. Well, you're just reading in the New Testament. You know, if you break one commandment, you're guilty of them all. The Sabbath day is the fourth commandment. You break that commandment, you breaking. You might as well commit adultery. You break the fourth commandment, you might as well steal. Because you're still going to be guilty of every single one of them. Let the church say amen. Let's go over here to the renewed covenant. The Barit Kadasha. All right. Let's go over here to the renewed covenant. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to uh, Luke, the fourth chapter. All right. I don't know if I really want to go to Luke. But we'll go to Luke and then we're going to go back some, okay? Luke, the fourth chapter. Let's see what Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus the Christ. Let's see what his manner, let's see what his custom was. You know, when people have customs, that's things that they do all the time. All right? Let's see what the renewed covenant, because a lot of people will accuse us. The only people accusing us all these pagan Christians who love bowing down the statues, wooden crosses, serving pagan holidays, and they're going to judge you for keeping your commandments that's been given to you by the Elo, by the Elohim himself? Man, this is a backward nation. Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth, the way he had been brought up. You read verse 14 and 15, and they tell you who it was. This was Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on Sunday. Hey, he said Sunday. <laughs> we finally got a Sunday. We finally got a Sunday. <laughs> Only one problem. It don't say that. Huh? And, and notice, it's saying the same thing from the beginning. On the Sabbath day. And he came Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the reading. That's what it says. That's what it says. It was the custom of our Messiah who the Christians have tried to hijack for themselves. It was his custom to go into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Remarkable, isn't it? Tell you what else to do. Let's go to Mark the second chapter. We'll turn to Mark. Chapter 2. And. We're going to start at verse 23. For clarification. Okay. Alright. When you have it. Say amen. Amen. All right. And it came to pass that he went that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began um, as they went to pluck ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Why, behold, why do they on the Sabbath day um, that which is not lawful? Notice the Pharisees are saying this to the king. This is a passage that your Christian friends like using a lot. All right. And he said unto them, have you not read what David did when he had need and was hungry? He and they that were with him, how he went into the house of, of Yah and in the days of Abinadab, the high priest, and did eat of the showbread, which was not lawful to eat, but for the priest and gave also to them which were with him. Y'all ready for this one? Verse 27, and he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. The Most High Yah made the Sabbath for you to rest. Not for you to go pick your own Sabbath day. You ain't God. Not for you to go pick your own time. He gave you one day of seven and he even told you what day it was, you disobedient man and woman. You better line up with the laws and statutes and commandments, if you're an Israelite, shouldn't even be a question. Wherefore, the Son of Man is Lord also on the Sabbath. 
It's mine. That's what he's telling you. I, I'm the king over this Sabbath day right here. I'm, I'm the one that made this thing. I'm the one that gave it to my people. Therefore, I am the Lord over the Sabbath. You know what? This is in the gospel. This is in New Testament. You know, even in the gospel it says, pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. I'll tell you what, man. We're pretty screwed up. We are really pretty screwed up nowadays when you come think about it. You know, these people can write a lie, tell a lie, and they can confuse our minds with nothing but lies because we're ignorant of what the Bible says. That's why Pastor Dow says, get to know your Yah, your Elohim. Get to know this word first before you go out on the battlefield. Uh, get to know this, all right? Because you're going to see what takes place once you get to know this word, all right? Hallelujah. You know, I got so many places. I, I mean, I really, truly do. I got so many places that we can actually go and, and, and hit this whole thing. I mean, we can just keep on and on and on and on and on and on going. I'll tell you what we're going to do, though. Let's go over to, um, let's go ahead and go into the book of Acts. All right, let's go after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. Let's go, at, this is after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, okay? Let's go there, okay? So let's go over here to the book of Acts. And let's see what the early assembly did, okay? Now, mind you, this is commandment, commandments. Go over to Acts. And let's start with Acts 13. Let's go to Acts 13. Acts 13. Now, I'm going to give you the direct verses, okay? I'm going to give you the direct verses. And when I give you the direct verses, that means when we get finished with this study here tonight, that you go do your own independent study, your own research, because faith come by hearing. It is a need. It is, that's, a, that's the way that the Most High has it, this thing set up. You must hear because faith come out here. And hearing by the word of y'all. Have y'all noticed something, though? You know when you're hearing from a Yah chosen vessel, preacher and teacher. You know how you know? You're not confused. Your mind is not jumbled up. There's so much clarity. There's a clearness in your spirit when you're hearing from a Hebrew Israelite who is a pastor sent by the Most High Yah. That's just, that's just the way it is. When you're hearing from people that are contrary to the faith, they bring utter confusion. Just, just total confusion right now. I mean, just total confusion. All right? So we're going to go over here um, to Acts 13, and we're going to start at verse 14. All right? But when they departed from Perga, and they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sit down. Let me tell you another thing right here, all right? You're not going to find one scripture in the Bible, the entire Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, you won't find one passage, one text, one scripture, and the whole entire record proving and showing that Yah changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. We're dealing with the Sabbath. We're not dealing with... Um, um, when they came over here on the first day of the week, when they came over here on the first day of the week, they never did. God never did sanctify the first day of the week. He never made it a special day. It's always been a work day. That's just all there is to it, period. I know what Christianity has told you what they believe, but you need to get ready for them boot lickers before they bring more confusion on you. But you can see right here, they went into the synagogue on a Sabbath day and they sat down. All right, we're going to go over here to verse 27. All right. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and the rulers because they knew him not, nor the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day. The voices of the prophets are read every Sabbath day. They have fulfilled them in condemning him. You hear that? Every Sabbath day. Verse 42 of Acts chapter 13. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles, isn't that something that you got people today that they want to practice exclusionary faith, discriminatory faith. They want to discriminate against certain people. Y'all hear this? Y'all understand it? And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogues, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath day. Do y'all hear that? The next Sabbath day. Everybody go to online church, 
dot org. Online dash church dot org. All right. We're Acts chapter 13, verse 42. Now we'll read verse 43 and 44. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many other Jews and the religious proselytes, Paul, Paul, and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of Yah. Notice, they persuaded them to continue in the grace of Yah. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of Yah. The next Sabbath day, the whole city came together to hear the word of Yah. Beautiful, isn't it? Let church say amen. I know it means assembly, but let the assembly say amen. I mean, Acts chapter 15, starting in verse 21. Acts 15, verse 21. Hallelujah. Y'all see how simple this thing is? See how clear this voice is? Faith do come by hearing. Hearing come by the word of y'all. Y'all hearing this? All right. Look what it says right here. For Moses of old time have in every city, in every city. Them that preach him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. Every Sabbath day. Man, you can't get no more clear of this. This is, in, this is after the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua HaMashiach the Christ. 